Let's do an example calculation of the type that you'll need to do for this week's lab. In this story, a student wished to determine the vitamin C content of his favorite brand of orange juice. To do this, he first prepared several solutions of known vitamin C content. And then from his chemistry class, he understood that vitamin C and iodine will react to one another. So then he simply counted how many drops of tincture of iodine were required to react with the vitamin C present in his known solutions. He did this experiment and he summarized the results in table one. Notice he prepared four solutions, paired them with known vitamin C contents and mi milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter of solution units. And they determine how many drops of tincture of iodine were required in each case. From this raw data, we could see that there's a relationship between the vitamin C content and the number of drops of tincture of iodine required. There seems to be a proportional relationship that as the vitamin C content increased, going from solutions one up to four, the number of drops of tincture of iodine also increased. To explore this relationship further, the student decided to plot the data. He plotted the data using an XY scatter plot. It's exactly the type of plot that we'll always use for our course. He plotted the number of drops of tincture of iodine on the y-axis and the vitamin C content on the x-axis. And when he did that, he gets figure one as shown here. Figure one shows that there is, in fact, a relationship between the number of drops of tincture of iodine and the vitamin C content. And it looks to be a fairly linear relationship. So because it's fairly linear, at least visually, he added a linear trend line to the plot, as well as had the program generate the equation and correlation coefficient for that linear trend line. The linear trend line shows that there's a relationship between the number of drops of tincture of iodine, Y, and the vitamin C content, X. So the equation, what we'll use a little later, is Y equals 112X plus one. This equation tells us that the number of drops of tincture of iodine is equal to 112 times the vitamin C content of the solution in milligrams per milliliter units plus one. And then our correlation coefficient, our square value, has something about how good this model is. The closer this R squared value is to one, generally the better the model is. Now that we have this equation, he's able to repeat the same experiment this time with his unknown, with his favorite brand of orange juice. And he determined that using the same experimental conditions, it required 31 drops of the tincture of iodine. From this information, we would be able to determine what is the experimental vitamin C content of this brand of orange juice that required 31 drops. We can do this because we now have an equation that relates the number of drops of tincture of iodine, what he determined, and the vitamin C content, what we're after, what we're trying to determine in our experiment. So our equation says that y equals 112x plus one. The number of drops of tincture of iodine, which is what he found earlier, is equal to 112 times the vitamin C content which is what he wants to calculate, plus one. So I can then plug in my respective number. So 31 drops is equal to 112 times X plus one, then solve for X. So we subtract one from both sides. We have 30 equals 112 X. And then we divide both sides by 112. When we do that, we have 30 divided by 112 is 0 0.267857. We're only allowed to have two suit figures here, but we'll keep one extra digit to avoid rounding errors. So we have 0 0.26 and 78, so that rounds up to eight. The units of this experimental value are then the same as the units of the x-axis, so milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter. If possible, though, we want to say something about how good this number is. So where Available, we want to compare the experimental value to a true number. The label on this brand of orange juice does advertise that the true vitamin C content is 60 milligrams of vitamin C per serving, and that one serving equals 237 milliliters. So using this information, we can say something about how accurate the results were. Just like last week's experiment, we can always judge accuracy by calculating the percent error of our results. 4% error is the difference between the experimental value and the true number 
that difference divided by the true number times 100%. But in order to compare the experimental number to the true number, in order to make this comparison fair, the units have to be the same. In other words, I need to fairly compare apples to apples. So I can't compare milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter to milligrams of vitamin C per serving. I have to either convert these units into these units or milligrams of vitamin C per serving into milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter. And we could do it either way. I'll do the latter. So we want to convert our milligrams of vitamin C per serving into milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter. Notice that all we need to do is convert my denominator units from serving units into milliliter units. And I can do that using this information as my conversion factor. So we have 60 milligrams of vitamin C per serving. This tells me that one serving is equivalent to 237 milliliters. Notice that serving units will cancel. And I'll be left with milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter units, which is exactly what I want. So when I take my 60 and divide that by 237, you get a value of 0 0.253 milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter. So this value of milligrams of vitamin C per serving is equivalent to this value in milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter. All I've done is a unit conversion. So this is my true number. This is my experimental number. You plug in those respective numbers into the percent error calculation. So we have experimental 0 0.268 milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter minus the true number 0 0.253 also milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter, divided by true number once again, 0 0.253 milligrams of vitamin C per milliliter times 100%. Calculate percent error. So we have 0.268 minus 0.253 divided by 0 0.253 times 100%. We get a percent error of about 5.9% positive 5.9%. So we can say that compared to the labeled value, the student's experimental results were almost 6% higher than what they should have been.